You're working at your desk when you realize something is wrong. It's the middle of the day, but the room around you has been plunged into darkness. You come up to the window and see no sun in the sky. But just a few moments ago, it was shining bright from the cloudless sky. You're observing a solar eclipse. It happens when the moon passes between the sun and our planet, obscuring the image of the star for a viewer on Earth. Sometimes the moon blocks just part of the sun's light. We call this phenomenon a partial solar eclipse. Sometimes our satellite travels in such a way that it blocks all of the sun's light. It's a total solar eclipse. For it to occur, the moon's apparent diameter needs to be larger than that of the sun. Only in this case will our natural satellite block all direct sunlight, turning a bright day into a pitch black night. If you want to completely close the need for this kind of content, then please support us by clicking subscribe and giving us a like. Thank you. One of such total eclipses will happen on Monday, April 8th, 2024. It will be visible across North America. The eclipse has already got an impressive name, the Great North American Eclipse. The moon's diameter on that day will be 5.5% larger than usual. If you decide to marvel at this amazing event, you'll need to go to the town of Nasus in Mexico or to the city of Torreon. There, the duration of the eclipse will be the longest, four minutes and around 28 seconds. This eclipse will also be the first visible in Canada since 1979 and the first in Mexico since 1991. Also, it will be the only total solar eclipse in the 21st century visible in Mexico, the United States, and Canada. And it will be the last total solar eclipse visible in the continental US until August 2045. So don't miss it. Most recently, an annular solar eclipse occurred on October 14th, 2023. Did you observe it? Write in the comments. Such a solar eclipse occurs when the visible diameter of the moon is slightly smaller than the diameter of the sun. Thus, the satellite covers most of the sun's light, but not all of it, and our star looks like a ring, annular. This beautiful phenomenon was visible in parts of the United States, Mexico, and many countries in South and Central America. In other words, millions of people in the Western Hemisphere were able to observe this cosmic show. Now, however beautiful solar eclipses are, your safety must come first. Partial or annular solar eclipses are different from total eclipses. When they occur, the moon never blocks the sun's bright face completely. It means you can't watch these kinds of eclipses without protecting your eyes first. There are special solar viewing glasses, also called eclipse glasses. You can also use a safe handheld solar viewer. Keep in mind that eclipse glasses are not your regular sunglasses. Those are not safe for watching the sun, however dark they are. Proper solar viewers are thousands of times darker and have to comply with special international standards. You should always examine your eclipse glasses or handheld viewer before use. If they are scratched, torn, or damaged in any other way, you should get rid of this device. Also, never look at the sun through a camera lens, binoculars, telescope, or any other optical device. Concentrated sun rays are likely to burn through the filter and cause serious eye injury. But let's say you have neither eclipse sunglasses nor a handheld solar viewer. Then what? There are indirect methods which don't involve looking directly at the sun. One of those is using a pinhole projector with small openings. You can stand with your back to the sun and use the device to project an image of the sun onto some surface. Remember one more important thing. Never use eclipse glasses or a handheld viewer together with cameras, telescopes, or binoculars. All of these gadgets require different kinds of filters. Solar eclipses are cosmic magic tricks during which the moon suddenly swallows the sun. Only they work not on magic, but on simple science. Let's try to find out how exactly they work and how you personally can observe this fascinating event. It all starts when the moon, the sun, and the earth line up in a straight line, with the moon positioned directly between us and our favorite star. This alignment is possible because the Moon's orbit around the Sun is slightly tilted relative to the Earth's orbit around the Sun. 
Solar eclipses only happen during new moons, when the moon is closest to the Earth in its orbit. So, when the alignment is just right, the moon's shadow is cast on the Earth, blocking the sunlight from reaching us. Imagine being in a room with a giant light switch, but instead of turning the light off, you just cover it with a big old moon. That's basically the solar eclipse. Solar eclipses aren't a regular occurrence, and they only happen a few times each year. The frequency of solar eclipses is determined by many things, like the alignment of the moon, sun, and earth, and by the position of the moon in its orbit around the Earth. Now, there are three main types of solar eclipses – total, partial, and annular. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon completely covers the sun's disk and the sky becomes dark as if it were nighttime. This phase can last for a few minutes to just over an hour, depending on the distance between the moon and the Earth at the time of the eclipse. A total solar eclipse can only be visible from a specific region on the Earth called the Path of Totality. Ooh. This path is typically a narrow strip of land or sea. And if you happen to be exactly in the right spot, you'll be able to enjoy this wonderful view. Unfortunately, not everyone is so lucky to get to see a total solar eclipse. Sometimes the moon only covers part of the sun. In that case, you'll see a crescent-shaped sun instead of a completely swallowed one. That's called a partial solar eclipse. And if you're really unlucky, the moon might be too far away from the Earth to completely cover the sun. In that case, you'll see a bright ring of sunlight around the moon's silhouette. That's called an annular solar eclipse. Solar eclipses are some of the most spectacular celestial events that we can observe from Earth. People have observed and studied them throughout history, and they've played a significant role in our understanding of the Sun, Moon, and Earth. For example, we use them to measure the size and distance of the Moon and the Sun, to study the solar atmosphere, and to test Einstein's theory of general relativity. Solar eclipses have always been important to people, so it's not surprising that they've always been connected to different myths and superstitions. Some cultures saw them as a sign of dreadful things to come, or a way to talk to their deities. Others thought they could be used to predict the future or scare away evil spirits. All these beliefs show how much solar eclipses have meant to people. There have been many fascinating and memorable solar eclipses throughout history, each with its own unique story or significance. Here are a few examples of some of the most mysterious, cool, or just famous solar eclipses. The eclipse of Thales is one of the most famous solar eclipses in history. It's said to have occurred in the year 585 BCE, and it was reportedly predicted by the ancient Greek philosopher Thales of Miletus. According to legend, Thales was able to predict the eclipse by observing the cycles of the moon, and his prediction is said to have amazed and frightened the people of the time. The eclipse of Ptolemy was a total solar eclipse, that's said to have occurred in the year 150 CE. It's famous because it's mentioned in the writings of the ancient Greek astronomer Ptolemy. He used his observations of the moon's cycles to make his prediction, which astonished and alarmed people of that time. The eclipse of the century was a total solar eclipse that occurred on July 11, 1991. It was visible across a substantial portion of South America. It was the longest total solar eclipse of the 20th century lasting for more than six and a half minutes. The eclipse of the pyramids was a total solar eclipse that occurred on March 20, 2015, and it was visible from parts of Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. It got famous because it passed directly over the ancient pyramids of Giza in Egypt, providing a unique opportunity for scientists and tourists to study the eclipse from this historic location. And, of course, the Great American Eclipse of 2017. It was a total solar eclipse that was visible across a large portion of the United States from coast to coast. It was the first total eclipse visible from the contiguous U.S. in nearly 40 years, and it attracted millions of spectators and was widely covered by the media. Since they happen quite rarely, you wouldn't want to miss such an event. Fortunately, we have a calendar of solar eclipses that will occur in the next few years. The Great North American Eclipse of 2023, expected to be visible in a substantial portion of North America from the Pacific Northwest to the Great Lakes region. 
and will be the first total eclipse visible from the United States since the Great American Eclipse of 2017. The Eclipse of the Andes of 2024. This one is expected to be visible across parts of South America, including parts of Chile and Argentina. It will be the first total eclipse visible from South America since the eclipse of the century in 1991. The eclipse of the Arctic in 2025. This one will be visible in the Arctic part of our planet, including parts of Canada and Greenland. It will be the first total eclipse visible from the Arctic in nearly 100 years. And the eclipse of the Pacific in 2026. This eclipse will be visible across parts of the Pacific Ocean, including parts of Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. It's worth noting that the exact timing and visibility of these solar eclipses may change as more precise predictions are made. Also, some other solar eclipses may also occur in the coming years. Don't forget to check the details online. But the most important question is, how do we watch them? The answer? Very carefully. Here's some general tips. Use proper eye protection. Never, never look directly at the sun, even during an eclipse. It's not worth risking your sight. To observe a solar eclipse safely, use things like certified solar eclipse glasses or a pinhole projector. These devices allow you to view the eclipse without looking directly at the sun, and they help protect your eyes from the harmful effects of the sun's rays. Find a good viewing location. To get the best view of a solar eclipse, it's important to find a location that is within the path of the eclipse and has a clear view of the sky. Use a camera or telescope. If you have a camera or telescope with a solar filter, you can use it to take pictures or observe the eclipse more closely. Just be sure to use a solar filter to protect your eyes and equipment. Stay informed. It's important to be up to date about the details of a solar eclipse, including the exact timing, location, and type of eclipse. This information can help you plan your viewing and ensure that you have the proper equipment and safety precautions in place. That's it! Simple, isn't it? By following these tips, you can enjoy observing solar eclipses safely and responsibly. And if you do get to see a solar eclipse, make sure to snap some pics and share them with your friends. Remember, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience after all. Ah, Earth. Home. The third blue rock from the sun. The only known planet where life can thrive. We have around 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon, water vapor, and carbon dioxide, give or take. The perfect balance to support our respiration. The troposphere is the lowest and densest part of Earth's atmosphere, 5 to 9 miles thick. It's the part of the atmosphere that keeps changing our weather. For any life to exist, we would need this atmosphere and the same combination of gases to breathe. If all the planets in our solar system were combined to become a mega-Earth, then humans wouldn't have evolved the way we are today, and we'd have a very different planet. If we take the landscape of Mars, we'll only have solid land without large bodies of water. Earth is the only planet in our solar system with bodies of water. One of the first wonders to see will be Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in the solar system. It towers Mount Everest by a long shot at 78,000 feet above the ground. Velus Marineris is a group of canyons that make the Grand Canyon in the U.S. feel like a mm, average one. This wonder stretches for almost 2,500 miles and goes more than 4 miles deep. On top of these epic terrains, there's plenty of other grand-scale locations on Mars that are way bigger than the ones on Earth. The planet might be as large as Jupiter. If the Earth were the size of a grape, then Jupiter would be the size of a basketball. We'd have the size of Jupiter and the rings of Saturn floating around us. The rings may seem like some large chunks of rock in the air, but they're actually ice particles and chunks of iced rocks. They range from the size of pebbles to car-sized ones. Saturn's rings are supported by the unique gravity in the region. With a lot of these ice rocks floating in the sky, there won't be much sunlight entering the planet, which means the planet will always be colder than usual. Not to mention the many moons it has. Our megaplanet could also have many moons circling above us, contributing to the tidal waves. Jupiter is known for the Red Spot, a place twice the size of Earth that has hurricane-like storms that have been going on for hundreds of years. 
the people of Mega-Earth will settle far away from it. Mercury is a planet but looks like the moon due to all the craters lying around. That's because of many asteroids and comets striking it over billions of years. But the landscape here mainly consists of mountains, highlands, cliffs, and valleys. The Caloris Basin is almost 1,000 miles wide. They believe it was formed by a comet. The deserts on Earth are mainly hot and consist of dunes of sand, but they also have flat plains and small hills. The largest desert in the world is the whole Antarctic continent. Mercury has no atmosphere to trap any heat, so it gets really hot when the sun is facing it and freezing cold when the planet turns away from it. On this combined mega-Earth, the deserts will most likely have a similar landscape to that of Mercury. The animals living here will probably be something like giant scorpions and desert snakes that soak in some sun during the day and go out hunting at night. But the soaring day temperatures would melt anyone walking. And even though Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, it's not the hottest. Venus has temperatures of nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists believe that the lands here are flat because of the extreme temperatures. But it's not all flat with some volcanoes and highland areas. We can probably find this terrain and climate near the equator, since it's always hot there. Humans can't live there unless they build special domes to sustain life. But since the planet is now huge, not all its territory needs to be populated. Some areas will have the proper atmosphere for breathing, but some places might not have such luxuries. Over at the poles, the climate will most likely mimic Pluto's, even though it's not technically a planet anymore. In 2006, they officially declared it a dwarf planet, and it's even smaller than the moon. There's not much known about this little mini floating rock, except that it's composed of around 70% rock and 30% ice. Scientists believe that a part of its surface is covered in frozen nitrogen, solid methane, and carbon dioxide. Since the mega planet is huge, gravity might be quite strong here. Jupiter's gravity is enough to double your weight. Humans will most likely be really tall and mega sized to match the big planet. Even the oceans will be huge. Our oceans will look like little lakes compared to what mega-Earth has in store for us. Humans need something close to 24 hours in a single day. Our bodies adjusted to it quite well. But it wouldn't affect us too much if the day had a few extra hours or a few hours less. We can't live on any other planet without wearing the proper gear. We wouldn't last more than a few seconds in places like Jupiter, Neptune, and Saturn. It's possible to last as long as you can hold your breath on Mars. The atmosphere is thin and the gravity is similar to ours, but you might freeze. Even though it's a red planet, it's actually very cold and has ice caps in the poles covered with carbon dioxide. The same is true for Mercury. You can only last there as long as you can hold your breath and be in the sweet spot between the sunrise and the sunset. Ancient civilizations wouldn't have been as diverse as they were on Earth since the extreme terrains and conditions wouldn't have allowed for discovery and training. But eventually, as humans develop special technologies for certain areas, different cultures would emerge. Many animals would also evolve in specific and unique ways. But because of the planet's enormous size, isolation, and being on top of the food chain would let certain animals be around since the beginning of the planet without evolving. So it's possible that this mega-Earth might have ancient dinosaurs roaming around, and they'd be even bigger than the ones on Earth. And even though there's a high chance that some humans might be physically different than each other, there might even be more than one species of humans living on opposite ends of the planet. Because of the isolation, they evolved in their own ways according to their surroundings. Over the centuries, technological advancements would spread different cultures around and we'd be more open to each other. Neanderthals and Homo sapiens once lived side by side and were considered as the two species of humans. Neanderthals were intelligent and used tools for hunting and drawing. Homo sapiens were survivors and wandered around to discover new land. There could be two dominant human species and other minor ones that live in certain areas on mega-Earth. They'd be bigger, tougher, and faster than us. The ones who live by the trees would have elongated limbs to stretch out and swing from tree to tree. The ones that live in savannas will probably run really fast and have long legs for that. 
Countries and cities will be bigger than what we have on regular Earth. A country can be as big as Earth itself. The human population can reach tens of billions. Special transportation technology might be invented for people to travel from one continent to another. Covering those distances can take months or even years if using regular aircraft. High-speed trains that travel so fast over land and rocket-like planes going through the sky. Traveling through oceans will require extremely sturdy ships. Traveling through the Atlantic Ocean is already scary for many, so imagine going on a voyage across a body of water that's potentially eight times the size of Earth. We're gonna need a bigger boat. There'll be areas to avoid, like the Red Spot with its perpetual storms raging on. But the tourist industry might have some room for anyone who wants to see it. Living on such a huge planet is unlikely going to become a reality for most of us anytime soon. But scientists are already discussing moving to other planets to find a new home for humans.